confused should I go through? Feels like 94. What's the humidity index? 72% humidity. I've had no issues with the mouth breather dew drops on my lashes, so if you're also a mouth breather like me, that will be really beneficial, I think. What's good? It's your girl back at it again for another video. The five head is out, so you already know what time it is. Melt proof, summer makeup, humidity proof, mask proof, melt proof, all of it. So let's just dive in. I have already prepped my skin and for the foundation I'm going to be using the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie. This foundation is one of the best long wearing foundations that I've ever used. I'm not afraid to say it. The reason why I like this is because it looks very skin like and at the same time it's also pretty hydrating which is not something that I normally associate with like a long wearing foundation and you really don't need a lot of it like this even this like a full pump is too much because it's very pigmented I know that there are probably a lot of them out on the market that are way more hydrating than foundations used to be like full coverage foundations used to be Fenty is a really great long wearing foundation as well but the problem that I have with that one is that it's too dry like I I can make it work but it's just a little bit too matte for my liking but this one definitely has more of this sort of like creamy consistency but anyways I like to use a makeup brush or like a makeup brush uh, but like a foundation brush like this and I'll just am I forgetting a step? I feel like I'm always forgetting a step. I don't think so. Okay. So I just dot this on my face and you'll see how little you truly need for this to make an impact. But another great thing about this foundation is that it has a pretty expansive shade range. I don't know the exact number of shades, I think it's like 50 or something like that, but it looks like across the board it is inclusive of multiple different skin tones, which we love to see it. Half a pump of that foundation covered my entire face and I really don't need that much concealer. Um, of course, when working with a brush, you might end up with some kind of streaking, but um, you know, you could easily fix that. But overall, I mean like, okay, look at this, five head, right? And just that tiny bit covered my entire, like this entire surface area. So any of you who have a five head as well, this will work perfectly, it will cover everything up, and it will do the job just fine. Now moving on to the un under eyes, I feel like there's this conception that to have a long wearing makeup for the summer, it has to be matte. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know. But I feel like there's often this perception that everything has to be like really powdered down and matte, and I guess it also depends on your skin type, right? But I feel like you could definitely do the dewy look. It's all about how you work with the products that you're working with. That's also not what I'm trying to say. Okay, listen. <laughs> Basically, you can make the dewy look work, okay? We're gonna do that today. I love a dewy look. My skin, as I've gotten older, has gotten drier, so I'm not super into the, like, the type of look that's so matte it almost looks like all the moisture was sucked out of the face do you know what i'm talking about i don't know i don't want to talk shit about people that like a matte look because i you know everybody has their preferences and what works for some people may not work for everybody else but we're just trying to make the dewy look work okay that's that's all i'm trying to say so i put a little bit of orange eyeshadow under my eyes because that works the best for correction I don't really work, my under eyes don't work well with like correcting concealers. Concealers just fade really easily on me. Concealer that I've been using for my under eyes is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh and this has pretty good coverage as well. Um, I don't like to put too much under my eyes because I feel like I get this like reverse raccoon effect 
where like my under eyes are too light and the rest of my face is just kind of like rosier or more bronzed so it just looks kind of weird but I put about this much under my eyes and then we blend it out so that's pretty much it for the face two steps I don't need to conceal anything else this foundation has got me covered <laughs> no pun intended and um, you know under eye concealer is all set so I'm gonna do my brows and then I'll be right back okay so one thing I forgot to mention if you do prefer a more matte look like if you're going to put mattifying powder over top of your foundation if that's something that you do and you still want to have a little bit more of a dewiness to your look I would highly recommend putting like a really emollient moisturizer before you put your foundation on this one in particular I really have been enjoying this is the Glossier Future Dew they call it an oil serum hybrid it really it's so strange it's like an oil but it doesn't feel sticky or slidey on your face it just really gives this pretty dewy glow and I like to put this on before my foundation and I feel like it always gives me this sort of lit from within type of look so I thought I'd mention that in case that's something that you were looking for I had this powder palette for probably like four years so I you know it's old <laughs> but I'm trying to use it up and all of these powders give this really nice I don't know lit from within look I'm going to say that so many times in this video so just get ready but I feel like it really does it mattifies everything like it sets the foundation but it never looks super powdery or heavy or anything like that I don't think that you know the set of powders are what you need to get a similar sort of look especially nowadays like there's so many powders from the drugstore and, you know other resources that you can get powders from that can give you a similar effect I'm going to be bronzing my face for this I'm using the Fenty cream bronzer this one of the best cream bronzers I've ever used hands down this is First of all, it's really long wearing, but I feel like this can also be used as a contour alongside a bronzer. Like it gives you that sort of sun-kissed look, but you know when you put this along your cheekbones, it also gives you just like a little bit of contour. So when it comes to summer, I am really into, well, not even just summer, just humid and hot weather I'm just really into cream products so like when you encounter the humidity and then your face starts melting just like a little bit it melts the product and makes everything look really let's say it together dewy I like to put blush oh I put too much oops um, you know I guess we're going for that sort of heat stroke look <laughs> but I really like to put blush more in the upper placements of my face rather than like right here. Mm, I avoid the apple of my cheek too just because I tend to get a little toasty as it is when I go outside and my face gets a little bit red and I just don't want to look tomato-esque, you know? If you've been on my channel before, highlighter is kind of where I just lose it a little bit. I really love highlighter, I feel like especially in midsummer just the summer season it's just the ultimate chef's kiss it makes you look so dewy here we go again dewy and, and like you've drank a bunch of water and healthy and all of that so I think I'm going to stick with a longtime favorite a longtime classic and it is the milk highlighter in lit I've had this for years I mean I'm not even close to finishing this it is my all-time favorite it's like a translucent cream highlighter I wouldn't even say that this necessarily has any type of color to it but um, it just makes the skin look really glossy And so once I'm done with all of the face makeup, I'm just going to set everything down with rose water toner. Moving on to the eyes, it really is dependent on 
what you prefer to wear because I know some people in the humidity won't even want to bother with eye makeup and that's fine. I'm kind of in the same boat. I like to keep things relatively minimal. So for me, liquid eyeliner is the best bet. And this one from Milani, the Stay Put Matte 17 Hour Liquid Liner. <laughs> this is just the most long wearing matte liquid eyeliner I've ever used and it's like, I don't know, five dollars, six dollars, something like that. Okay, so I put some pencil eyeliner on the upper part of my eye and if you really, really want to have a long wearing eyeliner, I would recommend putting a matte pencil liner over top of the liquid liner but if you put powder like a black powder eyeshadow over top that's really just going to set everything in and prevent uh, potential smearing even though this eyeliner in my experience was never smeared but you know sometimes you just want to be extra sure a really easy way to add some definition to the eye without using eyeshadow or anything like that I'm not really somebody who likes to wear a bunch of eyeshadow when it's super hot outside, so you could take your bronzer or even blush and just dust it over the eye. I've seen this trick a lot in the makeup tutorial world and I feel like it's a really good one because it just gives you a little bit of a tint of color on the lids. Kind of evens things out, covers up the veins, but it's not like you know, going full force with like a bronze or dark brown eyeshadow. For under the eyes, I'm actually going to take that same black pencil that I used for my waterline and very carefully draw a small little line on the outer corner of my lower lash line there. And then I'm going to take a pencil brush like this and smudge it out. Now I usually always skip this step of putting on mascara on camera because it's literally so boring, but one mascara that I have found that does not move when it's humid or hot is the Glossier Lash Slick and with a mask too because sometimes when you wear a mask, certain mascaras, I don't know, it's like the dew drops or the oof, precipitation, no that's not the word, what is it? the air that you breathe from your mouth <laughs> if you're a mouth breather okay sometimes the precipitation droplets that would come out from your hot breath migrate upwards because you're wearing the mask stick with me okay I have a point they go up and so I've experienced some like dew drops on my lashes which sounds cute, but it's actually not because the lashes start clumping in like threes and it just, it's a mess. So anyways, all of that to say, this mascara only is removed with warm water. So there's really nothing that's going to take this off unless you're continuously putting warm water on your lashes. And for that reason, it's, it's called a tubing mascara, I guess, because it comes off in little tubes. It's been really great and I've had no issues with the mouth breather dew drops on my lashes so if you're also a mouth breather like me that will be really beneficial I think. See this should I go through? Feels like 94. What's the humidity index? 72% humidity. If you're not from the States or if you don't use Fahrenheit, that's roughly 31 degrees Celsius. So, love living in a swamp. Um, anyways, final product, final step, the lips. Now, technically, you're not supposed to wear makeup when wearing a mask. I know this. But I break the rules. Some, that, that's the only rule that I'll break when it comes to the mask because 
Um, I'll still wear it, I just will wear makeup in it. When wearing lip products, it can be a little tricky because obviously there's some transfer here, but this, this is the Bites Outlast Outburst, God, <laughs> Outburst Longwear Lip Stain in Orange Fizz. Now, unfortunately, there aren't too many colors to choose from. There's this orangey shade, there's a red color, and then there's also a fuchsia. So, if you're not into bright lipsticks, I'm so sorry, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> no, but um, the reason why I like this lipstick is because you can blot it off and it leaves a really nice stain. And when there's the stain, there's no transfer, but you still get that bright color. So, let me just demonstrate. Super vibrant, really comfortable. Um, I like to go over the edges with my fingers so that it's not so, you know? But when you blot it. So I blotted off a majority of that and now we can do the, the kiss test. See? It's like a teeny tiny bit that comes off, but I mean, you still get that vibrant, pretty color. Uh, there's like no hardly any transfer onto the teeth and you know when you're wearing a mask or something's covering your mouth it won't peek through and that's really great so that's pretty much it for my summary humidity proof melt proof mask proof makeup let me actually put my mask on and show you it's really on there this mask is a little bit too big for me so there's like a little bit of gapping but I'm just gonna press it down Okay, and then barely, barely, barely any transfer. It's like a little bit from the top of my nose here, but otherwise, you can see where my lips are. There's no transfer on that. So, you know, just something that I thought I would share with y'all and some little tips and tricks that have worked for me. I'm just gonna build this lipstick back up because I love this color. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you so much for watching. You know, if you also live in a swamp, um, let me know uh, what tricks and techniques work for you because we're all in the swamp together. Mm. <laughs> well, we're draining the swamp right now, but we don't need to get into that anyways. This is Shrek signing out and I will see you all in my next one. Ciao. Don't get